Austin Price from VolQuest.com covering Tennessee football and recruiting. He joins us every week thanks to Rick Terry Jewelry Designs. Austin, thank you for the time. As always, tell us about this upcoming weekend, what the weekend looks like, and how important it is for Tennessee. It's a massive weekend and uh, just a ton of players coming in. Obviously, they'll be down one with uh, Jaden Burdell coming off the board yesterday, Josh, to Georgia. To Georgia. But, uh, you know, uh, it kind of sets the stage for official visits in June. Um, you know, if, if you're a kid that's really feeling Tennessee and, and you know, you, you know the Vols have a lot of momentum in your recruitment, this is another unofficial visit before your likely official visit uh, in the next three, four weeks. So, that means you're going to see, you know, Tennessee twice in, in, in short order, and that just continues to let the momentum build for a lot of players. And then for some, like a Daniel Hill, um, first time you've been here in a while and, you know, a chance to kind of reacclimate, get around the staff, and maybe Tennessee becomes a, more of a real factor there for the Mississippi running back. Jake Riddell, number one tight end in the country. Pick Georgia said that he knows he's going to play for a national championship, and Hey, that's that's fair. So I can understand that. Uh, if you're Tennessee, of course you wanted him because he's a he's a great player. You want all the great players. But I look at this offense last year with number one in the country. But the Georgia game let us let me know that the defensive front, the offensive line, is where I think the priority needs to be moving forward. What type of players coming this weekend? Defensive line, offensive line. Uh, that, that Tennessee really has a really good chance to get, who are uh, one of those special players? Well, I think you start with Cam Fountain, big defensive lineman out of the Atlanta area. Uh, that one's the one I'm watching this weekend, not because I think he's close to committing because I don't believe that's the case. But, you know, first time he's been up in a few months, you know, getting him back around, you know, Rodney Garner and Josh Heifel. G was about to see him multiple times this spring. Uh, those two have a good relationship. Um, I think it's very important. You know, I – I look at, you know, what you just said, and I think that's the crux of what Tennessee really needs to figure out over the next six weeks. Listen, you can get quality receivers, tight ends, running backs, you know, pretty much across the board at at, at most places. It's a line of scrimmage league. Tennessee wants to try to land Williams Winery. They want to land Cam Franklin. They love to land Cam Fountain. They love to land some Leos like a Jordan Ross or a Danny Okoye or whoever to get to the quarterback. Those are all keys. I flip it to the other side, and I go, man, what are they going to do at offensive tackle? Like, you know, that to me, that's the key position going forward because they've kind of put a Band-Aid on it with John Campbell, and they'll, they'll go shift over J.J. Crawford and Gerald Mincy to the right side this fall. But, like, long-term, who are your tackles a year from now? I don't think anybody can answer that, and I'm not sure Tennessee can answer that. Like, like they've, they've taken a bunch of kids that I think are, are you know, you have to kind of, like, develop them, right? Like, they're not ready-made. I don't want to call them projects because I don't think that's the, the proper word. But, like, they're not coming in and starting day one. So, like, you know, Brian Grant, you know, I mean, you've got to kind of bring him along kind of figure out where he's going to be in the process. There's two or three more like that over there. And then, you know, with the recruiting class, you know, they're going to swing hard and big at Brandon Baker out of modern day in California. That's a tough pull. Uh, you know, you're going to swing big, you know, um, at you know, you know Daniel Calhoun or the Seton kid at IMG or you know two or three more, they've got to figure out where they are and what they can get and realistically at you know land at the offensive tackle spot. I think that is to me probably the biggest question mark about kind of where Tennessee's recruiting is right now is offensive tackle. Like that's the, that's to me the key question that has to get answered over the next three, four, five weeks of visits, camps, unofficial visits. Like, you got to figure out where you are at offensive tackle because I think that helps shape your program for the next several years. Austin Price, VolQuest.com, the South Carolina game, the Georgia game, two losses last season. And, again, thinking about taking the next step as a program, the cornerback position in both of those games – did a really good job against Tennessee wide receivers. Did not create the same type of separation versus man-to-man coverage as Tennessee did in other games. So what is the plan at corner in the secondary to make sure that we upgrade in those areas too? Well, you, you've upgraded, you know, 
with, with last year's class. You have three corners you feel really good about with Jordan Matthews, and you know they love Ricky Gibson. He had a phenomenal spring, and they want to hope he and hope he continues to build. And then they love what Christian Conyers has done. Conyers probably you know a touch behind the other two, but like long term, you're like okay, these are guys that we can build the secondary around, and so. You know, I think that you, you like what you did there. And this current class, you know, Tennessee's going to, you know, swing at one or two guys at corner. But for the most part, you know, they love what Marcus Gorey can do. He's versatile enough to play corner, nickel, safety. You know, um, you know, they, they get really, to me, it's less about corner and more about safety and, and, and upgrading there. And I think that's where, you know, the question remains is, does Tennessee do anything this fall, Jason, to change their look in the back end, whether it be at corner or at safety? Because I think Tennessee's got to be more athletic, especially at the two safety spots uh, going forward, if this defense is going to take a, a big step, which, you know, as you pointed out, when, when they had their bugaboos, it was, you know, in the back end. Austin Price is with us from VolQuest with us each week, thanks to Rick Terry Jewelry Designs. Uh, wide receiver update, uh, where Tennessee stands with its top targets there, how important this weekend might be in that race for the highly touted receivers that they're pursuing. Well, I think it's big, especially for Amari Jefferson. Like Tennessee's battling Georgia and Alabama for the Chattanooga-Baylor product. And I think this, this weekend goes a long way to solidifying Tennessee as um, – in the same league as, as Bama and Georgia and his recruitment. And so um, yeah, I think, he, you know, Tennessee needs him to have a, a good weekend. I think that they'll go roll up the red carpet for him, show him a good time, and uh, then he'll head into official visits, um, you know, next month. And, and, again, long term, I still think Tennessee's uh, got a real good shot here. Now, in the short term, so I'm quoted this week saying that, Tennessee was a touch below Georgia and Bama. I think that changes this week. I think the quote coming out of this week is Tennessee's now on on par with the other two. Like, I'll be shocked if that's not the quote coming out of of, of Saturday. Tennessee knows how important Amari Jefferson is. He is as important a recruit in this class, especially at the receiver position because he's an hour and 20 minutes down the road. Ryan Wingo, we'll see. That one's going to be a battle, a million twists and turns. Out of the top, you know, the top guys that we're looking at, I still look at, you know, Jefferson, Wingo, and then Mike Matthews. Mike Matthews is another one I think Tennessee's got a lot of momentum with out of the Atlanta area. A- AP, running back room is better than last year, depth-wise. But we yep. also saw in that Georgia game where a special running back can make guys miss, can make five-yard runs, turn into 20-yard runs. And it, it seems like Tennessee is in position to land one of those type of backs that can take it the distance. Uh, what's the latest at the running back position? Well, you know, right now Peyton Lewis comes in this weekend. Tennessee's got all the momentum there. Um, as I just said on our board, somebody said, when's he going to announce? I said, well, my kids are in a children's play the next three nights or three days. And they have three performances on Saturday, 11 four, and seven, and I would say I will be busy sometime between the first performance and the second performance. So read into that what you will. Um, you know, I got you. outside of that, you know, I think Braylon Russell is someone that Tennessee watched this spring really liked. Uh, you know, he's a bigger back. He's 6'2". He's 240 pounds, but he doesn't look 240. He doesn't move 240. Kind of one of those, you know, he just it, 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 he may weigh 240. It may you know the scale may say that, but movement and looks doesn't translate to what the scale says. Like he just you know um, one of those freaks of nature, and you know I think Tennessee you know can't wait to get him up here for an official visit in June. He will decide July 14th, and then you know again what happens with Daniel Hill? He'll be here this weekend or supposed to be. Um, you know, and then Nate Frazier out of uh, Modern Day, Brandon Baker's teammate out in California. You know, does he make it back in for an official visit at some point? Um, you know, there's a recruit out of Florida, Chauncey's his name. He's committed to the Gators. But, you know, with Florida being in such turmoil, like, you know, if they start slow, which, you know, if you're a Tennessee fan, you want them to start slow because you play them early, then, you know, how much does that just really bury them with recruits and even guys they have committed? 
Austin, how often do you need to run your schedule as a parent by recruits if you know they are considering an announcement soon? Like, hey, you know, these these hours of the day would, would be best for me here coming up. <laughs> No, I, I don't tell them that'll be better for me. I just have to work around them. So, I, you know, I have to work around my kids' schedule and the recruit schedule and try to figure it out. So, you know, when, I, when I'm trying to pre-tape a, a, a video interview, I've got to take all those things into account. No doubt about it. Uh, I'll, I'll be traveling on Saturday, so I'll tell my wife if I'm driving, please turn on Austin Price's Twitter mobile notifications early to mid-afternoon. Don't let Austin fool you. When a, when a kid tells AP they're thinking about committing at five, Austin tells them, yeah, let's do six. Six is better for me. Uh, six is better. I got no, something I going will, on. I, 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 look, I, I will never tell a kid what to do. Now, I do offer advice as to, like, you know, hey, committing at 1115 um, after your Friday night football game on a Friday night, probably not the smartest play as far as traction. Like, you, you know, like most people are, like, either asleep or – not paying attention, so like you know, there are better times of day, better times of the week, um, where a commitment just gets more play. Like so six. you know, you try you try to help kids in that regard, but ultimately, man, it's their decision. They go when they want to go, right? Like if they want to go at eleven o'clock at night or two o'clock in the morning, then you just got to roll with it. There's a.m. There's p.m. There's you know Pacific time. There's Eastern time, and then there's AP time. AP time. I was thinking, I was thinking Swain time. <laughs> AP time has a better ring to it, though. The recruits will be in this weekend. They will be touring the Jason Swain Museum section of the facility, and oh, then gosh. they will make their decisions after that, and Austin Price will be covering it all. Find him on Twitter, at Austin Priceless, for those mobile notifications and read his work at VolQuest.com. And every week, hear him on Josh and Swain, thanks to Rick Terry Jewelry Designs, making it unique, making it special, making it just for you. They want to be your jeweler there at Rick Terry Jewelry Designs. Austin, we appreciate the time as always. Thank you, and we'll talk to you again next week. Appreciate it, guys. 